This is the seventh section on seven essential skills to build your career. We're going to focus on the seventh section, which is stellar customer service, servicing your internal and external customers. This section consists of four different lessons, CSO1, customer service tracks, CSO2, promoting the crux of customer service, CSO3, strengthening the links in the customer service chain, and CSO4, making your customers ecstatic, solving customer issues and complaints. This lesson is called Making Your Customers Ecstatic, Solving Customer Issues and Complaints. Reliable customer service comes down to consistently checking in with customers and making sure they are pleased with products and services and the overall experience with your organization. Reliable service creates loyal customers, and that's the backbone of any successful operation. Customer support is not limited to providing answers. Rather, it's an essential part of the relationship you have with any customer, both internal and external. In this module, you'll learn how to ensure a positive customer interaction in person, on the phone, or via email or letters. Fairness and consistency in policies and practices and why that's important. Options and alternatives to respond to customer needs for control and to minimize risk. Information needed for customers' decision-making. Handling customer complaints and fixing a mistake to ensure a long-term, mutually beneficial relationship. Friendliness is the most basic of all customer needs and it's usually associated with being greeted politely and courteously. On the phone, it's picking up the phone after a few rings, using the person's name, and expressing a desire to assist them. On email or in a letter, it's relying on protocols and using the right words and format that demonstrate a feeling of respect and professionalism. Customers need to feel that the person providing service understands and appreciates their circumstances and feelings without criticism and judgment. In person, that understanding comes across in your facial expressions, tone of voice, and the words you use, or the visual, vocal, and verbal clues. Over the phone, your voice is the only way to convey that, so watch the tone of your voice, the pace of your voice, and the pitch of your voice. Speak clearly and slowly. In written correspondence with emails or letters, you want to present professionalism. Follow all formal written correspondence protocols using a friendly salutation, thanking the person, outlining clear and concise statements and bullet-pointed summaries, and attaching any applicable information such as policies, spec sheets, or the like. Include links to the appropriate web page if possible. Sometimes glitches are bound to occur, and it becomes even more important for you to maintain your composure using phrases like, I understand, and follow the acronym SAVE for active listening. Summarize, ask questions, validate, and evaluate. These steps will ensure a positive interaction with your customer, whether it's in person, on the phone, or via email. Fairness and consistency. The need to be treated fairly is high on most customers' lists of needs. Consistency is essential to any relationship. If a person is inconsistent or worse, volatile, people will not want to work with them. Customers want consistency in emotions. Positive customer encounters are likely to add to customer loyalty and build a longer-term relationship. Consistency is key in the areas of policies, rules, pricing, and all interactions or customer experiences. It also reduces the possibility of unfair or preferential treatment. It's easier to fall back on a policy or procedure rather than responding to an ad hoc customer request. Saying, we have a 30-day return policy for external customers, or any requests for expenditures over $100 need to go through accounting for internal customers. This provides a framework of reasoning to the customer so they don't feel subjected to arbitrary decisions. 
Checklists are a great way to establish consistency and keep you and your department organized and focused. If everyone is working from the same checklist, which certainly can be amended as the group determines that's necessary, people will receive consistent service from person to person. Customers will feel more positive about their interactions that are consistent. A desk manual is a good way to train the department in the procedures so that new hires can learn the processes correctly and consistently. And team meetings within your department can help solidify your procedures. If everyone is on the same page and understands the organization's goals, values, and capabilities, the team or department will have solidarity and consistency. This will reflect positively on the individuals, the department, and the organization. Because really, consistency is a reflection of quality. If customers grow to depend on your consistent quality service, the bonds of loyalty will strengthen. And we want loyal customers to grow our business, streamline operations, and save costs. Offering options. Customers need to have a say in the solution. The simple question at the checkout, paper or plastic, puts control over the situation in the customer's hands. If you are in a customer-facing role, you can provide solutions based on a proposed solution. Examples would be tiered pricing based on usage, A-B options, or packages for low, mid, or high-level services. You could offer add-ons or incentives. And if you're interacting with internal customers, you can also provide options. For example, you can say, I can get you a quick summary by Friday in a shortened format, or you can wait until Monday for the full report. Which do you prefer? Offering an option puts the customer in the driver's seat and increases their satisfaction. It's always better to offer a choice of something or an alternative rather than saying no or saying this is the only way. Offering options to customers is important because it gives them the freedom to choose. It also saves time and eliminates frustration and provides the customer with some element of control over the situation. And this will build customer relationship and brand loyalty. Information for decision making. Customers need to be informed about the products and policies of your department and your organization. So you have to know how your department does business. Ask questions to determine the underlying needs and then propose a solution. Then customers need to consider the information. No one wants any risks, and their questions might indicate a lack of trust or lack of confidence in your solution. If you sense this, you can ask more questions and attempt to persuade them to make a decision. But often, they will need approval and will need to get back to you. So if that's the case, make it easy for them by writing down the information and perhaps sending an email with the information or providing action items to implement the decision. For example, if they need to get their manager's approval for moving forward, send them a quick email summarizing the information, providing backup data and other details to anticipate the questions the manager might have. This will save time and eliminate confusion. And follow up if you have not heard back from them for a while. Handling customer complaints. Customer complaints are inevitable for any organization, but not all complaints are a problem. Sometimes complaints can help streamline your operations, help you come up with new ideas, or otherwise motivate the improvement of a product or service. The biggest challenge is how to handle customer complaints in a way that leaves the customers understanding that they are valuable. Customers expect their problems to be resolved, or at least responded to, immediately. Delayed responses can make customers angry, and they end up even more dissatisfied. They may escalate the problem to your boss, or may post comments online, or tell friends about the terrible service they received. So handle complaints proactively by developing a list of frequently asked questions, charts, or other materials that can help answer some standard questions. To respond to a customer complaint, you have three main communication channels, in person, over the phone, or via email or a letter. In person, allow the person to vent. 
and don't take it personally. Listen and acknowledge their concerns and begin the active problem-solving process. And don't forget to follow through and follow up. On the phone, phone calls can often spin into gripe sessions with people going on about their problem. Getting transferred or hung up on will make the person's approach even more negative. You may be the recipient of a negative customer interaction on the phone, so do your best to maintain your professionalism and respectful behavior. With emails or letters, always take the high road and do not get into an electronic shouting match with them. Maintain your composure and review the email to ensure that it sounds as professional as possible when the person will read it. Fixing a mistake. When responding to the customer complaint, be careful not to blame another person or provide a canned scripted answer. Tailor your response to their specific problem and use this as an opportunity to start a genuine conversation, continuing to build a trusting relationship with your customer. Don't use a negative tone while conversing with your customer. Don't argue or get defensive while your customer is talking about the problem. And make your customers feel that you are on their side by empathizing with their concerns. Just admit the mistake, apologize sincerely, take accountability, and take steps to redeem yourself and your department or organization. When customers sense that you are sincerely sorry, it usually diffuses the situation. You can provide your customer with an estimated timeline to reply back and keep your customers informed. It will assure them that you are looking at their issue and will get a quick resolution. Once the resolution is successful, make sure you follow up with your customers. Or you could send them an email a week or so afterwards, ensuring that the solution worked for them. In summary, build your technical skills and knowledge of your internal processes and systems so you can better service your customers. Demonstrate strong interpersonal skills when interacting with customers. And build internal and external relationships with strong communication and conflict resolution techniques. Resolve customer issues gracefully and efficiently. In doing so, you are on your way to creating more loyal customers, improving your product, and delivering a better quality of service to your customers, both internal and external. Thank you very much. This has been a presentation of Eye to Eye Workplace. This module was called Resolving Customer Issues, Presenting Options, and Handling Complaints. Congratulations, you've just completed one of more than 30 modules from Eye to Eye Workplace. These modules are provided on YouTube for your benefit to preview the extensive training content of our management training modules. After four modules, you can take a multiple choice online 10 question test based on the content of four of the videos on YouTube. There are tests available for team leadership, interviewing and hiring, talent management, performance management, communication, efficiency, and customer service. You'll earn a certificate of completion. For only $9.99, you can document your management success. Go to itiworkplace.com forward slash store Pay $9.99 for each module and you'll get a link to the certification test. For more high-impact, low-cost training, follow eye to eye Workplace on LinkedIn and YouTube. Or visit our website at www.eye2eyeworkplace.com. Thank you.